Ngayon po ay nasa series tayo entitled Knowing God. For those of you na first time uh, na nag-join sa atin, we're on our third week of our series starting uh, uh, of the year. We really want to dive into knowing God because it's the starting point of everything. Lahat ng pinagdadasal mo sa, lo- sa Lord, kung ikaw ay paulit-ulit taon-taon, may mga pinagdadasal ka na hindi pa rin binibigay o hindi pa rin nasasagot, Maybe, just maybe, ito yung kulang. You have to know God first because that's the starting point. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And when you say uh, knowing God, tayo mga Pilipino, mahilig sa ganito. Yung, I mean, yung may kakilala. Sino sa inyo dito yung pag may pupuntaan ka? May kilala ka ba sa ganon? Yung mga padrino system, yung mga ganyan. And we love may, yung may kakilala. Ano? And I hope si God kakilala nyo. A lot of you, ang dami nyo kilala sa lahat. <laughs> si God lang ang alien sa inyo. It says here in Jeremiah 11 and uh, 9.23, uh, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Sini may tatlo kang ganyan? Wise ka, mighty ka, rich ka. Sini tatlo meron kang ganyan? Bigyan ng jacket yung isa na yun. Okay, hindi, wala ba? Okay. So kung nandyan ka, okay lang yan. Okay, pero sabi sa Bible, huwag ka rong magyabang. If you feel you're wise, if you feel you're mighty and rich, wag ka magyabang. Dito ka lang iya-allow ni God magyabang. Gusto niyo bang magyabang ever? Dito ka magyabang. Okay, tinan niyo to. But let him who boast, boast in this, that he understands and knows me. Wow. Yun lang ang pwede mong ipagyabang. Pag tinanong ka, bakit ang galing mo sa negosyo? Okay, pause. Hindi dahil graduate kang Ateneo, Lasal, UP, Matute. Okay? Kasi si God yan. Dahil kakilala ko ang Lord. Kaya natuto ako ng wisdom how to run this business. Pag tinanong ka, bakit ang guwapo mo? <clears throat> Inborn. Hindi ganun ang sagot, okay? Huwag ganun ang sagot, okay? Limited lang sa ilan kami dyan, okay? So, pag tinanong ka, bakit ba ang galing-galing mo? Si God. Bakit pag ganyan ka? Alam mo, ko ako lang, wala talaga ako mapapatakbo negosyo. Ko ako lang, hindi ko kayang palakihin itong mga anak ko. Ko ako lang, hindi ko yung patakbuhin itong marriage na to. Eh, paano mo ginagawa? Si God. Okay, so pa- parang ganon. Laging default mo, it's always God. Because that's the, that's the only way for us to boast. If you want to boast, boast that you know God and you have a relationship with Him. And that's the reason why we're all here. We want to get to know more of God each and every moment of our lives. Dapat si God mas kakilala mo ngayon compared yesterday. Last week, we talked about knowing God. In, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, we talked about God's glory. Pastor J.R. preached on this uh, subject about the glory of God. Last week, we talked about God's goodness with all the mash-up and all. So, pakinggan nyo na lang po sa podcast and sa YouTube. We talk about si David in the midst of seemingly parang hopeless situation. In the midst of receiving the promise to be the next king. 32 years after he became a king, wow, he can say, taste and see that the Lord is good. We talk about that uh, uh, subject po about God's goodness. And today, we're gonna talk about yung favorite yung part ni God. Okay, God. God's generosity. Everybody say generosity. generosity. Yan ang gusto natin. Kaya minsan lumalapit tayo kay God, di ba? Parang tingin natin kay God, yung genie. Alam mo yung genie? Yun, yun, hindi si Jenny na bisaya. Si genie, okay? Yung minimas mo, lalabas yung genie and then you will have three wishes, di ba? So sometimes tingin natin kay God is like a genie. We come to Him, we have this set of uh, wishes, okay? And, and, and sometimes we think of modern day na lang, ATM. We come to God like an ATM. Diba, pupunta ka ATM kasi you need money. Wala naman pumunta sa ATM na pumila para pagdating sa booth, okay lang. Trip-trip lang to, hindi ako mag-withdraw. Of course, you go to, a, to an ATM to withdraw. And sometimes, we draw near to God because we needed something. We needed, most especially if it's a material thing, healing, those things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, don't get me wrong. When it comes to God's generosity, there are two schools of thoughts na mga lumalagana, okay? One is sometimes we think, God, we have this poverty mentality, okay? Ano yung poverty mentality? Parang feeling mo, the more pious you are, the more spiritual you are, you're closer to God. Kaya ang mindset mo, pag mas mahirap, malapit kay Lord. Sino-sino ang tingin nyo ganun kay God nung araw? Yung para pag naghihirap ka anak, mas malapit tayo kay Lord. Kasi tingin mo kay God, kuripot. Tingin mo kay God, parang hindi kaya i-provide. Remember si Alin Josie, nangingin ng baon si Junjun. Nay, pengin si kwenta. Sabi ni Alin Josie, 40? Aanin mo yung 30? Ang laki naman ng 20. Kala mo madaling kumita ng 10. Ito, 5. Wow! 
from si Kuwenta, ang tindi ng discount, right? Limang piso naging baon. And sometimes we look at God parang ganyan. We look at God na okay na tayo. You have this parang mindset na ayoko manghingi kay God. And to some of you, you have done a lot of sins, parang feeling mo, sobra naman kung hihingi pa ako ng blessing kay God. Okay na, na-save na ako. Ang dami kong kalokohang ginawa, hindi nyo lang alam kung ano. Pero it's too much to ask God naman kung blessing pa. Now, on the other side naman of the, uh, 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 of the yung, uh, nung mga ganitong mindset is the work mentality. Parang feeling mo, you have to work hard for your blessing. We look at God as something like Santa Claus. Na si God keeps record of who's naughty or nice. Para this Christmas, you will get a better gift if you've been good. So we have this idea that God is somehow like a Santa Claus who's keeping lit. Ah, nagkasala ka? Okay, bawasan kita ng blessing. Oops, Nag- nagpo at opo ka, you have more blessing today. Kaya sometimes we feel nag-aabang ka sa sa LRT o sa EDSA, and then somebody nakas, nakaswipe doon sa, sa kalye and then nadumihan ka. Shucks, ano kaya to? Dahil hindi kaya ako nag-pray? Ano kinalaman nung taxi driver sa pag hindi mo pag-pray? Right? And, and kinukonect natin lahat because we have this mentality na si God is a God who blesses us if we work, if we're good, then blessing comes. Now, there's another thing na idadagdag ako. May mga tao naman po, again, yung pong poverty mentality, it comes with false humility. Yan po yung napuproduce niyan. Parang, uh, ano lang ako, parang, okay na ako dito. But to, 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 pag tininan mo, to the very core, gusto mo lang na parang kami, kaya na yung magtiis para sa Diyos namin. On the other side, we have these faulty expectations naman. Itong mga work mentality, akala mo laging ibe-bless, so you have this entitlement in you. But come to think of it, the very root of this, whether you have false humility, or humility rather, the root is actually pride. Parang you, you feel more blessed sa mga taong mayroong LED TV. Pagka ikaw, Kristiyano, na nagko-commute, <laughs> sila naka-bends, makamundo. Yan yung mga taong mapupunta sa impyerno. Wow. Parang feeling mo pag naka-iPhone 7, <laughs> worldly. Dahil ikaw naka-3210, ito talaga, godly ako, Okay. Ano ba naman ang phone? Pang-communicate pang lang. So you feel highly spiritual than other people. Now on the other side, same thing. These people, the feeling nila, I'm blessed because I'm entitled. The root there is pride as well. Come to think of it, ano? Magkapatid yan. All these two have this faulty mindset of faulty understanding of God's generosity. I'd like to add one thing. There's, there's this teaching as well, na lumalaga na po, not just here, but also in America, prosperity gospel. You know what prosperity gospel means? Basta maniwala ka lang, pare. Aalign yung langit sa universe. Alam niyo mga teaching like that? Uh, what's this book? The Secret. Now, if you just think hard enough, if you believe hard enough, the universe will align to your liking and you will get what you want. Ibibigay ni Lord lahat sa iyo ang magagandang bagay. Wala yung mga teaching about suffering o bawal yung mga sacrifice. And sometimes, ano, we look at God na parang ganyan, parang prosperity gospel. Tulad lang isang mokong na to, nag oh. Lord, bigyan niyo po ako ng girlfriend na mabait, maalalahanin, loyal, faithful, at maalaga. Sabi niya, so Lord, bali lima po lahat. Wow! Ang tindi naman mag-pray na to. Di ba? Eh, bawat isa pala, isang babae. Di ba? So we have this mindset na our God will give us whatever we want. So whether you fall on the trap that God is parang may poverty mentality ka, or you're falling onto the other side na God is a work type of God, work mentality, or to the extreme that God is a prosperity gospel type of God, I'm going to share to you about David's uh, 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 psalm about God's generosity. Actually, the one that we're going to talk about today is a psalm that is a thanksgiving psalm, Psalm 65. They sang this psalm during a, a harvest time. Okay? And this is a festival with, which is characterized by public rejoicing. Parang piesta to pag kinakanta tong Psalm 65. They're giving thanks for the life-giving water. Okay? Pag napunta po kayo ng Israel, it's really dry and parched land, but God has blessed them. So, nag-worship sila, nagbibigay sila ng, 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 ng uh, pasasalamat because God is, was so concerned to them during the planting season. 
And it's totally different from their neighboring uh, countries or your neighboring nations nila. Because kung sila nagpapasalamat because of God's goodness and God's generosity, yung mga karatig bansa nila nagwa-worship naman to their gods. Small letter G. You see, in ancient uh, times, ancient people believed in fertility gods. Ayan, yung mga fertility gods. When properly manipulated by rituals and sacrifices, at natuwa sa iyo yung God mo, they're gonna make your crop grow. Are you following? Kunyari, na-please yung isang God sa Egypt, si God, kung sino mang God, okay? Kung sino mang Diyos yun. Apple Diyos or whatever Diyos. Okay, may extra Diyos pa. Pag day off, may extra yon. So, ang dami nilang Diyos, when they please and appease their God, they're gonna have good crops. And when lean years come, it means, Nako, our God is angry. Or we have displeased our God. Kaya bad trip. They're offering their own children just to have a good crops for the year. Are you following? Because they're thinking we should appease our God, we should make our God feel good so that the blessing will come. It will rain, the sun will come up. So these pagan worshippers were the one responsible for the outcome of their crops. Come to think of it, they're thinking because of what we've done, now we're blessed. Because of what we've offered, you offer your firstborn son, now we have a good uh, a harvest. And modern day translation, tayo na mga modern day, what have we sacrificed, listen up, mga businessmen more especially, what have we sacrificed at the altar of success just to reach our goal? Our dreams. Have you sacrificed your time? Nag-aral ka ng dalawampung taon para magpakadalubha sa dyan. Sa pag-aaral lang ng ano, harina. Harina lang. Ano? Ang tagal. Ano? Tatlumpung taon ka nag-aral. Ano? I don't know. Ilang pung taon ka. I'm not, I'm not against mag-doctorate ka and all. Okay? But when you put your trust in your academic accomplishment, in your academic attainment, Buti na lang, meron akong doctorate degree, kaya ako nandito. And then it becomes our God. One more you hear you sacrifice ma- a meaningful relationships. You sacrifice your relationship with God first. You've sacrificed your relationship with your, with your spouse. You're winning battles left and right sa pagiging doktor and you're losing the battle at home. Hello? You've sacrificed meaningful relationship with your children. Yes, big time businessman ka, pero yung mga anak mo walang amor or relationship to you. It's saddening because Steve Jobs had to allow someone to write his autobiography when he was about to die. For one reason, major reason, you know what? So that my children will know me. Wow. Imagine, your children will know you through a book. Everybody adores Steve Jobs. I mean, the reason why we have a good keynote here is because of Steve Jobs. But he left a book for his children to know him. It's saddening, isn't it? So we've sacrificed meaningful relationship with friends. We've sacrificed health for the, for, to gain success. We may not have these fertility gods, but whenever you put your hope and trust through your attainment, educational attainment, your last name, your padrinos, your contacts at, uh, at the government, whenever you put your trust, and then pride will come in. It's a celebration of pride because God is never in the picture. Now you become prideful, and you neglect being grateful to God because it's all about me. Because of my connection. Nagpakadalubasa akong doktor. nag opera ako ng brain and all. That's why I'm successful. Are you following? No, there's nothing wrong. I just want to balance this. There's nothing wrong with working hard. There's nothing wrong with being busy. But at the end of the day, sino pa sa salamata mo when success comes? Kanino mo i-attribute yung success? Is it because of me? Me, my contacts, my last name, my, my, my doctorate degree, then I present to you your God. Actually, you're a God of your own thinking. You became God of your own self. But that's different because God's generosity, generosity is different. Your default that everything I have here is because of God, and that's what's David's default. Now, we're going to look at how is God's generosity displayed through this psalm. Paano ba na-display yung generosity through this psalm ni David found in Psalm 65 na pag-aaralan natin? Are you ready to learn from David about the real picture of God's generosity? Well, let's just pray. Father, we ask that you open our hearts this afternoon to receive your word. May mga tao, Lord, dito ngayon, nasa taas, nasa baba, watching us, 
who have created their small letter G gods, whom they've depended upon, Lord, for their source of security, providence, ikaw, Panginoon, ang dapat na nandon, and yet we've created these small gods. That's why today, Lord, speak to us Tanggalin niyo po, Panginoon, help us to remove those small letter G gods that we've created and replace it by the one true God. Through this teaching, Lord of David, in Jesus' name, amen. You see, that's why in the Bible it says, do not make for yourself an idol, because it's, an idol is something you can make, okay? So how is God's generosity displayed through this psalm? First of all, the God that, that David honored and, and glorified is a God generous Shah his rich in provision. Everybody say provision. Okay. It says here, you visit the earth and water it. Talking about God. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the grain for you have prepared it. Look at those words. You visit, you greatly enrich, you provide, you have prepared. Their neighboring nation and default nila is to offer to their gods, maybe a, a, a child, a bull, a ram, and then their God will visit them. But this is different because David is saying, Ikaw, you visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it, you provide, and you have prepared. And it says here, you drench the plowed ground with rain. Melting the clouds and leveling the ridges, you soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You see, yung pong nation of Israel, they needed rain. And David knew, and the rest of the Israelites knew, apart from God, hindi uulan. Okay? Kahit magsasayaw ka dyan sa God mo, kahit mag-offer ka ng itlog dyan sa kusa simbahan, malamang hindi uulan. David knew that it's God who blessed them with abundant crops. And then David continued talking about his provision. You crown the year with your bounty. Sino rito naniniwala sa mga year of the rabbit, year of the dog? Sino rito naniniwala sa year of the monkey? Tila may katabi mo. Sabi mo, hindi mo taon ngayon. Okay, so, ang taon mo ay taon ni God. Okay? Your crown, sabi, you crown the year with your bounty. Walang kinalaman yung mga hayop sa, sa year of the bounty ni God. Every year is a year of bounty if you put your faith in God. And it says here, your way contracts overflow with abundance. It's not dependent on that, on that cat. Alam niyo yung cat na hip-hop? Yung gumaganon? Walang kinalaman niyo. Pag nawala ng baterya niyo, wala ka ng blessing. Walang kinalaman niyo pag-aayos mo ng pinto facing south for God's blessing. That's idolatry to the core because you're manipulating your God. Yung pintuan mo, hiharap mo lang dito, papasok yung blessing. Naku, yung pintuan mo pala, nakaharap sa north. Papuntang marikina yan. So, ikaw naman, papareconstruct mo yung buong bahay mo. Kasi sabi ng feng shui master mo, na all of a sudden, you become your own God, isn't it? Na kahit may kasalanan ka, basta your house is facing south, you will be blessed. Hello? Saan mo nakuha yun? That by putting that frog with coins sa nguso, hindi ko malaman ba't may frog sa nguso. Alam ko yung princess, kumain lang sa well, laging prince, queen, or whatever. But wala ko bakit ang frog na meron sa nguso na coins and then you're gonna be blessed. May pinya pa. We have a friend na merong bahay na may feng shui. Say, kung ano naman ito yan? Say, man. <laughs> Pag kumapasok ako, nagugulat ako. Kung ano, ano yung... Pagpunta mo sa siya, oh, oh my gosh, may dragon or something. <laughs> ano tong dragon lang to? Ah, Basta wala kilala mo sa pong suya. Sabi talaga na susi yan. Ah, okay. Kala ko. <laughs> yung iba rito, mga born again na. Kaharap ko pa yung isa. Meron pa sa bulsa. Okay? Meron pa tatabing sa bulsa na parang pang paswerte lang. Pastor, wala mo masama. Pang paswerte lang naman ito. Eh. Kay God naman ako eh. Lordship. Lord of all or not at all. Pwede mo sabihin sa misis mo, honey, 365 days ngayon ng 2017. Ha? 364 days sa ko uuwi. May one night, huwag kang magtanong kung saan ako uwi. Okay ba? Malamang unda niyang ka ng saksak, di ba? And it's what we're doing with God. God, sa lahat ng area, okay ako sa'yo. Huwag mo nang pakialaman tong pungsoy ko. Kasi nakalaka na namin to. Eh kung paliitin ka ulit ni God, ha? Tapos palakihin ka unti-unti, okay? Maniwala ka sa kanya. Yan ang problema sa'yo eh. Ha? Nakalakhan mo na, ha? Paliitin ka kaya. 
wala namang ma- merong nawawala kasi you're not trusting fully in God. Kaya yung term wala namang nawawala, meron pare, merong nawawala. Hindi kay God, sa iyo. Because half-hearted ka. Pag binless ka, you're upon your own doing. Ang galing ko talaga. Gumasa ako ng 300,000 sa reco- re- 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 ano to, reconstruction ng bahay natin. Kaya tayo bless sa business ngayon, honey. Wow. Then you become your own God. Congratulations. Dugtong mo na sa pangalan mo. Holy Jeff or something. <laughs> Holy Alex or whatever. Dugtong mo. Holy Ryan. Or, but, but, but dagdagan mo kung gusto maging Diyos of your own doing. You see, it says here in 12, verse 12, tuloy-tuloy siya, the passions of your wilderness overflow. Look up here. A wilderness is, has always been a sign of dry and, 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 and it's a weary land. Kaya nga, parang I'm in my wilderness. But it's interesting in verse 12, the other half of this verse, it says, the grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture. Paano nangyari yun? Wilderness, paano naging pasture? You see, this verse is talking about a miraculous provision. That kung ikaw ngayon ay nasa dry season, financially speaking, if you're now today in a, in a season, uh, 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 maybe health, talking about your health, you're in dry season, you see, God can convert it into something fruitful and, and last pasture. Remember si Moses? Sino ba naman hindi makaka-remember kay Moses? Remember Moses? Yung gumawa ng ark. Tumango ka. Halatang di ka nagbabasa ng Bible. Ito rin yung sumagot ng God sila yung pinatay ni David eh. Okay? Hindi na yung nasa TV. Okay? So, remember si Moses. Okay? The one who parted the Red Sea. They're in the middle of nowhere. Walang tubig. And God told Moses, just talk to the rock. Parang, rock? Water, please? Ganun lang. Eh si Moses, bati, kinatok pa niya. Okay? So parang, sabi ni God, okay, nakausapin, kinatok mo pa eh. Okay? So parang, God provided water in the midst of a dry land. Remember when they're so suya na? <laughs> suya, ing- okay, may mga English speaking dito. When they're so suya na with what they're eating, God sent mana. You know what mana is? Yung mana. Coco crunch from heaven. Okay, so palang God sent coco crunch from heaven. I mean, they're so suya with the food they're eating. God, wala namang ibang food. God sent manna from heaven. I mean, imagine, every morning, may Jew, yung Jew na yon, pagka umangat na yung araw, magiging manna from heaven. It's a flakes from heaven. It's like honey, I don't know, ang sarap siguro na pagkatin natin heaven, baka yun ang kakainin natin. Paulit-ulit, and for 40 years, God never failed to rain manna every morning. Nung wala, eto na, they make suya na naman tumana. Sabi, God, wala namang ibang food. God rain quail, tokuneneng, umulan ng tokuneneng, sa kapugo. Ayan, magsawa kayo, doon na invento yung kwek-kwek. Okay? God rain quail from heaven. Gusto niyo ng meat? Eto, quail. Now, this is in a wilderness. This is in a place where, where there's no source of provision and God miraculously, for 40 years, never failed to provide. Hindi na luma yung shoes nila. Okay? Hindi na luma yung damit nila. Tumanda lang sila. Okay? Pero lahat, everything was provided for. Now, let me ask you this question. Are you in a, some sort of a wilderness right now? What kind of wilderness you're into right now? Ano yung mga bagay na tuyot ka na? You know what wilderness looks like? Yung parang paulit-ulit, hindi nag-grow. You have this business, ayaw mag-grow. You have this whatever. You have this sickness na palala ng palala. You have this relationship na hindi nag-grow. What type of wilderness you're into right now? Are you willing to trust God? Or, God will tell you, be my guest. You can stay here for 40 years. Because the travel is supposed to be a few days. It took them 40 years because of unbelief. Now, go ahead. God is telling you, go ahead. Be a, be a poverty, uh, have a poverty mentality for the rest of your life. Be my guest. I have eternity to spare. <laughs> or you can end up naman na sobra kang kala mo, it's all your own works, nakakapagod. Yayaman ka, pero pagod ka. Stress ka, pare. Ang dami mong kondo, pero stress ka. Konting ano lang, hindi ka makatulog. Ha, utang-utang na naman yan sa... And mo hinuhulugan eh. Mas takot ka pa sa katapusan ng buwan kaysa katapusan ng mundo. Sa dami mong hulugan na kinuha. mag yung ganyan. Ang daming Jew. Katakot ka kay Judith. Di ba? Ang daming Judith na dami. 
Ang dami mo kinuha eh. Kotse, condom, ang dami. Kami nga ni Grace, parang inisip namin, ilan lang ang kondo namin? Labing walo so far. <laughs> Hindi namin maikutan lahat. I mean, imagine, si, binibigyan mo ng sakit ng ulo yung buhay mo eh. Yung susunod mong kondom bilhin, i-donate mo sa real life. Magpaaral ka ng estudyante, mag-support ka ng missionary, mag-support ka ng campus missionary. Then yung investment mo sa heaven na pupunta. Kesa ang dahil mong kondom, wala nag-renet, nabubulok. My gosh. Are you listening? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi ikaw yon. Sabi mo, sabi mo, hindi ikaw yon. <laughs> yun nasa likod ko yun. <laughs> so, so far. You see, this bunch of Israelites, around 2 million of them, they're gonna go to a promised land. Remember, that 40-year journey, they're gonna go to a promised land. They're gonna live in houses na hindi nila tinayo. Imagine, they're slaves for 400 years. Mula nung ninuno, nung ninuno, 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 nila. They're slaves. And now, they're gonna live in houses they never built. They're gonna go to a vineyard na hindi nila tinanem. They're gonna live the life. Imagine nyo to. From squatter area, titira ka sa Forbes Park. Imagine, overnight. So can just picture. Now, God reminded the Israelites through Moses. Moses, sabihin mo to sa mga tao na yan. Because there's a, tendency, there's a tendency for human being to think this way. Look at the, the, the verse. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Look at those possessive words. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. What? I mean, God in heaven was saying, I remember you're a slave. And I only Pharaoh kayong palabasin. With my, with, my, with my hands, with the ten plagues, halos pagtabuyang kayo. And not to mention, you asked for golds and silver sa mga neighbor nyo, and they gave you everything. They plundered Egypt. And what are you saying again? By the strength of my hands? Ni wala kang puhunan, pare, na lumabas ka ng Egypt. And now you're filthy rich. There's a tendency for human being, look at the word, pride. Everybody say pride. There's a tendency for us when we accomplish something of worth and value, <laughs> you may say to yourself, my last name, my educational attainment, my connection, my skills, my strength, my whatever you want to replace that, it will boil down to pride. Now, I have a warning for the prideful people. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. <laughs> okay, 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 and gives grace to the humble, okay? So if you're prideful, look up here, pride comes before destruction. Kadbuntot niya lagi, destruction. So kung mayabang ka ngayon, it's just a matter of time, you're gonna be destroyed because that's the, ni- that's the nature of pride. Destruction will always be on your tail. So those prideful people, look at the... Try to examine those people who've, who've been destroyed. Life has been destroyed because of pride. So I'm telling you, if you're that person, welcome to the club of fertility gods. You're, 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 you have this fertility gods. You've created the God in your own mind. My connection, my boss, my career, my wealth have produced this success for me. Now here's a warning of Moses. Through Moses, rather, look up here. The next verse is very important for you to understand. Para hindi tayo yumabang. But remember the Lord. Everybody say, remember the Lord. But remember the Lord your God. Why? He is the one who gives you power to be successful. He is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth in other verses. In order to fulfill the covenant He confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. So wag kang yayabang. When you want to go to success, of course, God has given us this godly ambition. Go for it. But make sure God is the one who is going to be glorified and lifted up and He's the one who is be celebrated. Not you. Ang default mo lagi, si God yan. If you read the book from good to great, those great leaders, ang default nila will always say, it's not me, it's, it's the people. But if you're a Christian, it's God. And people will see the distinction. How come iba ka? How come pare-pareho lang tayong ahente rito? Iba ka? The way you manage the stress. The way you manage how to meet quotas. How come you're different? <laughs> Di naman. May God lang ako. Meron ka ba? Parang ganon. 
What have we to offer to the altar of success just to reach our dreams? It's God being glorified. That's why when we do our prayer and fasting, the five days of uh, prayer and fasting, I hope you've joined us. Anybody here, you join us at prayer and fasting? Raise your hand. Tinan nyo. Tinan nyo mga nagtatas ng kamay. Ang papayat niyan. Okay? Because that's part of the package. Okay? Na close ka na kay God, pumayat ka pa. <clears throat> Halata naman sa akin. Okay? We've done, we have a lot of speakers on the afternoon and evening uh, worship services. We've done praying for the different sector of society, uh, government. We, we, we pray for the nation. We pray for uh, uh, youth. Okay? And here are some of the prayer, answered prayer. Okay, si Kathleen, first day of prayer and fasting, same day of my mom's sixth chemo cycle. Wow. Our bill went down from 40 to 3990. Grabe naman, pantikes lang niya dapat yun, no? 3990. I was so surprised. God is awesome. I'm just amazed. Kathleen P. Hindi si Bernardo, Kathleen P. Yan, okay? Another one. Third day of prayer and fasting, God provided 20,000 to pay my bills. Thank you, Lord. My sobra pa. Grabe naman. Saan ka pa? When, when your default is to honor God, He'll make sure He'll take care of everything. But then, like, you can take care of yourself naman. Kaya lang kakastress, pare. Ang pangit mo pag tumingin ka sa lamin. Pagod ka, humpak yung ano mo, ang payat mo, yung asawa mo, iwanan ka, yung anak mo, adik, nabuntis sumaaga yung isa. Ang worse, ano? You can do it on your own. Pero you're like, a, alam niyo yung rat na nasa, yung rat na nasa, ano yung tawag doon? Yung, yung may will? Ganun na, kakapagod. Parang kang daga. Kaya nga sabi, you're in a rat race. Kahit manalo ka, you're still in a rat race. Daga ka pa rin. Kahit manalo ka sa rat race. Hello. Doon na lang ako sa labas kay God. Another one. Provision was more than enough last 2016. Eh, ba't nag-pray ka pa? Okay. Hindi, hindi. Tingnan natin. Call me Pirey niya. <laughs> Sobra. But nasama to. Okay. I ask God for knowledge naman pala. Ang dami niyang pera. Okay. I ask God for knowledge and discernment on how I'll spend my money and honor Him by tithing. Mm, kinig kayo. Ang dahing tinamaan. I was able to do that and more. I was able to partner with 10 Days Mission. Hindi initial ng boyfriend yun. Okay. I was able to partner with 10 Days Mission, travel, and get insured. Praise God. Wow. Among you here, yung kita mo na i-enjoy mo. Meron malita, sobrang pagod na pagod kaya dumaan lang. Di ba? Nasaan yung sweldo? <laughs> Kagabi na sa ATM pa, nasa na? Kinuha na ng City Bank, kinuha na ng BPI, kinuha na ng kung ano-anong pinagkakautang mo. So, provision. Next, it says here, sabi dito, talking about provision of God, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all. How will He not with Him, look up on the verse, graciously give us all things? If you're so stressed out, it, the provision parang kulang pa. Yung parang, alam nyo, hindi man lang mag-abot yung akinsit katapusan. Yung laging, na-experience yun na ba? Yung na-experience kasi namin ni Gratian, yung early part ng marriage namin, we were not honoring God through our earning. I was earning, konti lang naman, parang mga 300,000 a month. So, <laughs> Ah, 10 years ba yun? <laughs> okay. So, I was earning. And then, laging kulang. Meron ba rito yung parang laging kulang? Yung inihintay mo na yung sweldo? Yung parang mag-abot, yung pambayad ng bahay, yung tuition, yung, yung pampers. Anak, wala mo ng gatas ngayon, ha? Kasi kulang two days, three days, mangungutang ka, credit card. Parang ngayon, parang hindi mag-abot. When you start honoring God, ngayon ang dami na yung buffer. Para four years yata, buffer namin ngayon. Para mabubuhay ako kahit four years hindi magtrabaho. Hindi ako kakain nun. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> Look at this verse. He provided that all things. Kung hindi niya in-spare yung own son niya, how in the world you're thinking that God is a stingy God? If He did not spare His own son for your salvation, how will He not also with Him graciously gives us, look at the word, all things. He's a generous God. He's a provider. He owned the thousand uh, cattle in a thousand hills. I mean, ganon ka big time yung God natin. And a lot of times we put God in a box. God, dito ka muna. Magninegosyo lang ako na may illegal. Kailangan God ng under the table. Ito na takbuhan nga yung God. Eh. God, yung Bible mo kasi 2,000 years old na. Iba na ngayon dito sa kosto. Under the table na God. Over the table, including the table. Okay? So ano ba gusto mo God? Okay? <laughs> Hindi lang under the table God ang labanan. That's why you're in a mess. That's why you're earning money and hindi ka kumpleto. You know why? Because you put God out of the picture. 
you thought that God is only a Saturday 4 to 5.30 thingy. Good luck. I'm telling you, it will be very hard for you. Because you're going to be your own provider. <laughs> Stressful, par. Problemahin mo si God. Ganyan si Grace. When, I, when, when she got married to me, <laughs> you're the provider. Mamoblema ka dyan. Nilangan buhay niya. E din sa mabuhay niya. Pas pa, paayos ng buho, pa, lahat. Ako provider, that's my job. God has given me the grace to provide. If you're a working mom, I'm not saying na, mag-resign ka na. No, no, no. Have the wisdom. But mga dad, look up here. God has given us the wisdom to provide for our family. God will bless you. Will honor your faith. mag ka. Honor Him. Next is power. Everybody say power. David knew that he's not just generous in his provision, but also in his power. Look at the next verse. You formed the mountains by your power and armed yourself with mighty strength. He's talking about the mountains where they plant and all you mga taniman. And not only that, you quieted the raging oceans with their pounding waves. So talking about tsunami, okay? So God, uh, David was saying, he's telling, God, I know you're the one who put parang uh, 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 a, a, you deli- meron delineation between the raging seas, the waves, and itong dalampasigan, the shore. You quieted the raging sea. You don't allow tsunami para to destroy our crops. And then it says here, you silence the shouting of the nations. Even those people who want to plunder us, you quiet them. So he's talking about protection. That God has the power to protect them. That God will protect the blessing that He has given you. Anybody here, you have a blessing, and then all of a sudden, wala parang barang bula. Normally, pag di ka nagtatights, ganyan yan eh. Yung parang, walang protection si God. But, and, and this is true. We look at Malachi 3.10, our favorite verse pag tithing, pero mas maganda yung dalawang verses na susunod. Because we often use this, bring the whole tithe to the storehouse, there will be food in the house, test me in this, and then I, will I not open up the floodgates of heaven? And pour so much blessing that there will be not a room and not to store it. And that's true. There's a verse in the Bible, you have to give up yung nasa storehouse mo because there's another one coming. Sobrang blessed ka, nag-aabot. Hindi yung akin sa hirap na hirap ka. At resi pa lang, wala ka ng pera. Dito, katapusan na, well, ang dami ko naman pera, pamigay mo. Mag-support ka. Yung building, may kulang pa. Ginagawa pa yung chapel natin sa kagarde sa taas. Mag-donate ka. Yung mga hindi pa tapos sa pledge nyo. Alam ni God yan, okay? <laughs> Nagkakalimutan, pre, okay? Bumili ka ng LED ngayong taon, ha? Okay? Wa, ano lang, ha? Eh, nag-pledge ka. Hindi ko nakasalanan yon, okay? Pero kung may pledge ka, okay? Fulfill mo, bari. Okay? So, Malachi 3.10, that's a good verse. If you tithe, God will open the floodgates of heaven. And that's true. We've experienced that. Majority na nagtatites, ng mga tao dito na nagtatites will attest to that. Wala pa ako nakitang kristyano na nagtatites na nasasabihin sa huli, Lugi yata ako kay God. 20 years na ako nagtatites, ha? Wala pa ako na ganun. It's all about blessing beyond can they can ever imagine. Now, I want you to look at the next verse because this is very important. When you tithe, I will prevent pests. Hindi pets. Okay, may esa. Pests, okay? From devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. Because yun yung dalawang problema when you have a farm. May pest Saka hindi pa hinog, nalaglag na. Whether sa rain o sa hangin. But God is saying, the blessing that was left, the 90% that was left, I'm gonna make sure every centavo counts. There's gonna be a protection. Anybody here, hindi talaga sweldo mo, dumaan lang. Or dahil di ka nagtatites, parang hindi mo ma-enjoy yung pera mo. I was talking to a couple, uh, uh, kinakounsel ko, parang Pastor Jim, talaga yung pera namin, parang hindi na ma-enjoy. We're working hard, ang laki ng sweldo, compared to last year, ang laki ng sweldo, but they're more stressed. Anybody here, you're more stressed this year than last year, or 2016, mas stress ka kaysa 2015, despite the fact that you're earning more. Because wala kang wisdom, kumuha ka ng LED, kumuha ka ng kotse, ang dami mong panglabas na blessing kuno, but deep inside, hirap na hirap ka. Buy now or cry later. That's what the marketers will always say. My friend akong taga SF dito. That's what they're gonna say. Buy now or cry later. Sabihin ko na sa anak ko, oh, ngayon ko na umiyak, but later pa, okay? <laughs> because they're so good at it. Marketers, I have nothing against marketers. If you're a marketing graduate, you're doing a fantastic job. But let me tell you something. Wag kang pahook. Okay nga bumili, pero may pera ka ba ngayon? 
Because gustong gusto mo tong iswipe. Yung sign ka ng sign. And then magwa-wonder ka, saan kakukuha ng pambayat, end of the year, end of the month. To buy things you don't need, with money you don't have, to impress people you don't like. Grabe naman tong credit card, di ba? Parang makita nilang nakalakos ako ngayon. Ha? Tapos Instagram, Instagram, laki mo yung buhaya para kitang-kita. Ha? Oh, I woke up like this. I woke up like this. Suot mo yung pamasko mo. Guys, this world will force you to conform to its mold. This, this world will conform you. Buy this, buy that, buy this. Pwede pa naman LED, bili na LCD, pwede pa LCD, bili ka ng curve. It's a never-ending pursuit. If you base your worth and value from material stuff, wow, I pity you because every six months, bumababa value mo. iPhone 7 ka ngayon. Yung 7 plus, ginagawa na six months from now. Magusto mo mauna sa CDR King, may 8 na nga eh. So, anong gusto mo? Every six months, your value goes down. That's why you're in debt. Who among you here believe in God, you'll be debt-free this year? Amen! Kung amen talaga, amen! Dalawang kamay pa, oh! Come on! Now, I have nothing against business debt. If you're may utang ka dahil sa business, go. If you feel like expanding, go. Have the wisdom. Pero kung may utang ka sa material stuff, man. Kami ng wife ko, we have a credit card that we use pagka lang ang, ang, ang ano namin, ang... Ang uh, kasunduan namin, we only buy through credit card if we can pay it in cash or we can pay it yung susunod na billing period. Are you following? So, kunyan, may gusto kaming bilhin na hindi kaya ng budget. Huwag nang bilhin. Hindi yung swipe ng swipe and then pagdating ka sa kaya niyan. Minimum lang. Minimum, mamamatay ka sa utang. Lumubog man tong mundo. Hindi ka lulutang dahil sa utang mo. <laughs> Minimum binabayaran mo, pre. Mamamatay ka sa interest pa lang. And my God, look up here, will meet, there's that word again, all your needs. It means He's a generous God, all, not just some. My God will meet all your needs. The word my God is so personal. We'll meet all your needs according to His riches of this glory in Christ Jesus. Guys, He's not just rich in provision. He'll make sure that the blessing, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and He adds no trouble to it. He's going to make sure He's going to protect that blessing because He's a God who's powerful, not just provision, also He's a God of power to protect the blessing. And also, lastly, look at David now. This is a psalm that they sing every time they harvest. They're dancing and they have this type of dance that they're dancing, honoring God because of the a harvest that they've uh, experienced, a good harvest. So they're singing this psalm and they're declaring, and come to think of it, most of the time, when we think of God's provision, when we think of God's generosity, it has something to do with material stuff or healing. But see, the last part has something to do with His generosity, with His mercy. Everybody say mercy. mercy. It's interesting because there's a starting point. I did Psalm 65 from the end, Towards the top, okay? Ni reverse engineer natin yan, okay? Pro- provision, power, and now let's talk about He is rich, He is generous in mercy. It says in verse 1 to 2, the opening statement of this psalm, praise is due to you, not to the small letter G gods, not to Baal, not to Molech, kung sisining God nila. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. Oh, you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. He's saying, on default, it's you who receive all the praise. We may receive a good blessing. We worked hard for this harvest. But God, at the end of the day, it's you who gets the glory. Not the COO, not the CEO, not the janitors, not the rank and files. No, no, no. It's you who gets the glory. And all people shall come to you. And look at the next verse. This, this is very important. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive some of it. No? You forgive them all. Everybody say all. Some of you are selective in their forgiveness, isn't it? Pinaforgive mo lang yung mga taong love mo or may kailangan ka. Some of you are for, uh, uh, forgiving people 
not because you want to forgive, pero kailangan lang dahil mangungutang ka. Anybody here? But you see, God is different. God forgave every one of us here of our sins. We've offended a holy God. We're sinful to the core. The moment you're born, we're sinful. And yet God, when you ask for His forgiveness, He doesn't keep records of wrong. It's like we're starting on a clean slate. Hindi katulad ng, ng ibang mga tao may utang tayo, nakas, may kasalanan tayo, lagi na recall And then David continues as we I end, what joy for those you choose to bring near those who live in your holy courts. You see the progression? They were pardoned. They were chose to bring near. And now they're living with Jesus, with God. Look at the progression. Pinatawad, pinalapet, pinapasok sa bahay. And there's this joy. One who thereby is brought near to the presence of the Lord will have this joy or happiness to live in the presence of God. You see, the word brought near, as you can see, you know, all my ending verse is all about Jesus. And Jesus also, it says here in Ephesians, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, you who once were enemies of God, you who once were God is hidden his face, you who once were pornographers, you who once were prideful, you who once were sexually immoral, you who once was envious, you who once was guilty of a lot of sins, that's what far off means, malayo kay God, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now, all of a sudden, God, who sees us unrighteous, filthy, now all of a sudden, because of the blood of Christ, that's what we're commemorating during communion, now God sees us, we're righteous. Because of the finished work of His Son, when we put our faith in Him, we are now hidden in Christ. Hinahanap niya yung lumang jeep. Nasaan na yung jeep na balasubas ng araw? Hi, God. Oh, righteous ka na pala. You give your life to Christ, to my son. That's what we're doing. When you put our faith in Christ, God no longer sees you as unrighteous and filthy. He sees you as worthy of His presence. He'll invite you to His court one day throughout eternity. Wow! And that's the generous God we serve. Let's all stand on our feet today. Aren't you glad that our God is merciful? Hindi ka ba natutuwa na si God hindi lang generous? Look up here. Hindi lang siya generous sa hinihingi mong kotse or bahay or lupa or healing. Because all of those things are just temporal. You have your car now. Mamama, what do you mean? Ang bukas. You have your healing now. Mamatay ka rin naman eventually. Physically. You have your house now. Eh, mapag namatay ka, hindi mo na matitiran yan. You have a lot of things now. But God and David knew more than any temporal stuff. What I want, where I want God to be generous is in His mercy. That He will, not over, he will, he will overlook my sin. Look at the verses that we use. In Philippians 4.9, My God will meet all your needs according to His riches of His glory. Okay, about Jesus Christ. Look at those three uh, 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 verses that we use. He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, graciously gives us all things. But now in Christ Jesus, we were once was far off. But now, we were made close to God. You see, I know we're praying for a lot of stuff. We're praying, I'm praying for a lot of stuff. You're praying for a lot of stuff. But here's the thing. We're not saying you don't pray for material stuff. But better make sure that your heart is right when you're asking for those things. That it's not going to be a God to you. iPhone is good, but when it becomes God to you, then you just made yourself an idol. God wants to bless you beyond you can ever imagine. But here's the question. Are you willing to honor God? Are you willing to use that to advance God's kingdom? Are you willing to open your house, if you pray for a house, for small groups, for Bible studies? Are you willing to offer a ride for someone when you're praying for a car? Because you see, see Jesus Christ, po, He did not parang withheld sa atin, your salvation. In fact, here's my end point. Our salvation is the greatest expression of God's generosity. 
Our salvation is the greatest expression. Not your car, not your provision of material stuff, but the greatest expression of God's generosity is when He gave His one and only Son to die for you and me. So whether you get your car or not, whether you get that healing or not, once you get Jesus Christ, you have everything. That's my prayer for you. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> Father, we thank you for allowing us to learn from David's, Lord God, his psalm that talks about you're a God who provides our material stuff. Ayaw mo kami na patay guto. Ayaw mo kami limos. You want us blessed with material stuff because you provide things for our enjoyment as well. But Lord, help us not to turn these things into an idol. Help us not to put our trust and hope on material stuff. Help us not to put our trust on our businesses. Help us not to put our hope in our cars and, and, and our wives and our children. Help us not to lose focus that only you is the one true God that richly provides us. And help us to rely on your power for protection that you are the one who will provide for our needs and yet you will protect it as well, Lord God. You'll make sure that our blessing will be protected and provided. And Lord, thank you because ultimately, your son dying on the cross is the greatest expression of your generosity. Hindi mo kami muna tiningnan, mabait na ba to or hindi? No, Lord. You just gave your son willfully so that we may live. So thank you, Jesus. Because you're the default namin. We're not going to focus on material stuff, but focus on you. Because once we have you, everything else is just an icing on the cake. Everything else is just a bonus. Because ultimately, you are our source of security and, and purpose. You are a source of identity. Provision comes only from you. So Lord, help us to know you in a more personal and loving way. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's give God praise.